This is part one of a two-part series on the Brewbilt brew sculptures. In part one, we're gonna go over all the components of how they're put together and how they work together. This is the Lowrider digitally controlled electric brew sculpture. But we sell various configurations, whether it be a tippy dump, whether it be propane, whether it has the electrical control head or not. They all work relatively the same. So this video will help cover most of those systems as well. All right, so one thing you're gonna notice is there's three vessels here. Uh, let's start over here, we've got the the hot liquor tank where we essentially heat our water. We've got our mash tun where you perform your mash and then you got your boil kettle, which uh, heat up your wort. So let's start with the hot liquor tank. First thing we should say is all three of these vessels are very similar. First, they all have a mirror finish. Second, they all have indications of fluid levels, both in liters and in gallons. Third, they all have these cool notched lids that allows the electronics and other things to come through them. Fourth, their silicone covered handle awesomely stacks onto here to make it easy. That's kind of the same thing for each one of these. The hot liquor tank, the most important thing is that it's oversized. It's actually double the volume of the other two vessels. And we'll go over why later, but it's always nice to heat up a bunch of hot liquor water. Two, it has the sling blade electrical element in there, and that's how you are going to turn on and off the heat to come in here. Third, you have a digital sensor that both has the temp sensor in it, as well as a float switch. And that float switch is important because it won't allow you to dry fire that electrical element, meaning you have to have enough liquid in order for the element to come on. Fourth, you have the heat exchanger. We'll go over how that works in a future video, but it's in here to allow you to control your mash temp. Coming up front, we have the analog temp sensor. This is a tri-clover temp sensor. It's always nice to have two temp sensors in every vessel to kind of compare. I always like analog, it's adjustable. You can move it around. If you find it drifting, you can calibrate it independently. And the last thing you have on here is the ball valve. Just a simple ball valve to allow you to flow liquid out. All right, let's move over to the mash tun. So the mash tun, like Chris said, a lot of the same features, but we've got, let's start up top here. We have the ultimate sparge arm. So this allows you to, you know, sparge over the top. It has a float switch on there as well. In this case, instead of dry firing, it's gonna stop your hot liquor from going over the top. So you can set it inch, two inches above that way you'll never get a stuck mash and have you know, too much water on there. Moving on down, again, we've got the, the analog and digital. Then there's a false bottom in there that allows you to kind of maximize your volume. So there's not a ton of dead space down there. And again, TC fittings and the ball valve, it's all controlled. And then this would go back through the heat exchanger and it's all controlled by the control panel here. The control panel. It's the brains behind everything when it comes to the brew day. It's your helping hand. It's not necessary to just program and sit back and watch, but it helps you do all three processes and stages of your brew day. So for the hot liquor, essentially you can set up two things. One, the temperature of what you want the hot liquor. And as a little added bonus, you can actually preset it up to turn on somewhere in the night before so that you're hot the next morning when you're ready to brew. For the mash, you can pre-set up your mash stages. So you can set up, you know, that you wanna do all kinds of rests. It's got pre-set up ones for you, or you can fully dial in your own mash schedule. And for the boil kettle, it not only has this killer intensity meter, meaning you can control that burner super easily with this big slider, but you also have the ability to set up up to six warnings, meaning it's time to add hops, it's time to add whirl flock, it's time for the end of the boil, it's got a nice little buzzer, and it just tells you what you're doing, where you are in the process, and helps you stay on task. There's various systems out there that do similar things to this control panel, but it being touchscreen, it being logical, really sets this apart from most other systems.
All right, last but not least, we have the boil kettle. So one thing I love about this boil kettle is, you know, it's got the, uh, the heating, electric heating element in there, but the sling blade goes around the outside. So when you're stirring in hops and things like that, it's not in your way like most systems where they're kind of in the middle there. It also gets a great uh, convection going. Um, like Chris mentioned on the control panel, you could dial that back. So boil, you know, boil over is a big thing on there. So being able to dial that back quickly and easily is gonna stop you from having boil overs. Um, we've also got, again, the analog and digital uh, with the float switch in there so you won't dry fire the system. And then you got this awesome whirlpool arm that allows you to get a really good whirlpool going in there. On hoppy beers, whirlpooling is like key. So you're able to do that as well. And then it's all sitting on this amazing structure here, this uh, steel frame. This frame is amazing. First off, it's purpose built. It's made of 304 stainless steel and it is made for this. It's not adapted from something else to work with this. So it's solid. Vito and I were both standing on there. That's like 400 pounds in addition to everything else and it didn't even flex or give. And then it has wheels in the front and then a handle for the back. So you can pick it up to do basic movements of it. No, you don't want to take this down the freeway, but it's nice to bring it from the garage to an outside patio or whatever. However, we do have a photo of how we got it to my house because this thing is a beast. This system includes two pumps where the tippy dump system only needs one. And it also comes with all the tubing needed and these great quick disconnects that make it super easy to connect it all. So that's basically it for the introduction on how the components all work together. In the next video, we'll go through how to use it, how to use each one of these to do your mash, to do your boil, to do everything you ever wanted and how to make it consistently repeatable. All right, that's it. Subscribe so you can check out part two and thanks for watching.